working on a John Deere 4310 and what I'm trying to get resolved is there's an issue, um, kind of a recurring issue with the clutch, right? This is the e-power reverser 4310 and it has the controller and it has all the uh, variable um, <clears throat> switches on the, on the different areas where it needs, right? So one of the areas is on the clutch. It's got a little switch in there that's a variable switch when you push the clutch in. Uh, voltage changes to the controller or the feedback voltage changes to the controller and then if you release the clutch it also changes right so that's kind of how um, the onboard controller knows what you're trying to do with the machine so one of the one of the common things that you see a lot <clears throat> is that the the clutch either is acting like it's slipping or it's 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 going it's stopping by itself and then going and stopping by itself but you're not really touching the clutch pedal at all and that's kind of happening by itself so that's all being controlled most of the time through um, just a voltage signal coming from that, from that switch, right? And the name of that is called a potentiometer. Um, it's a clutch potentiometer, so it's just a, a fancy name for a variable um, switch, right? That lets the voltage go either from low to high or high to low, depending on the, vis the position of the switch. <clears throat> so today I'm gonna try to go in there, diagnose what exactly is going on with the, with the switch and see if it either needs to be replaced or perhaps adjusted. You can adjust these and that's the most common thing that the dealers will do is they'll check the voltage on these and they'll just adjust them within spec. Um, the other real common thing is that these tend to go bad, meaning that the voltage is still kind of coming out of the sensor or the switch, but it's, it's, not, it's not consistent. And when it's not consistent and it fluctuates, that controller is gonna get confused and it's gonna throw a code. And the code's going to show up on your on your code uh, light over here on the on the right side, right? So this is true for pretty much all the variable switches on the E on the E series, right? It's just a system that simply tells either high or low voltage, and the controller can see what you're trying to do with the machine, whether it's um, you know putting on um, pressing down the clutch or it's you know, putting on the PTO or it's, or it's wherever these switches are. Um, that's how this whole system works. Uh, so today I'm going to go through how to, how to troubleshoot this and then also can show you that this switch on this machine is bad um, and I'm going to adjust it too, uh, but it needs to be replaced. But the way, the way you do that is uh, you want to back feed the wire. So first thing on this, whenever you touch these variable um, switches, do not unplug them and turn the machine on. That's not something you don't want to do because it'll confuse the controller and you may have to reset the controller even in some cases. So you don't want to do that. Always leave them plugged in. The way I work on these is I back feed them. I back feed them with a, with a sewing needle. So you're going to take a sewing needle just like that and you're going to, you're going to push it through the wire, right? And this isn't going to hurt the wire. It's not going to damage it. It's not going to, it's not going to move the insulation. It's just going to stick through there so you can get the voltage on it. Um, and of course, the whole goal here is leaving that connected, the harness connected to the to the sensor, so you don't screw up the controller uh, memory settings and need to reset the controller, go into relearn mode. You don't want to have to do that if you don't have to. Um, so that's what I do. I backfeed that center wire. The center wire is the variable uh, wire, and the wire closest to me, that's orange, is the five volts um, constant wire. So that's voltage in, and then the feedback wire is going to be the center wire, and the ground wire is the uh, the far wire, the top wire, the furthest from uh, the ground, right? So that is how that all works. And all you're gonna do is, you know, back feed it and you're gonna put a voltmeter on there and you're gonna ground the, the black part to the, to the ground on the machine and the positive to the, to the wire in the center. <clears throat> okay, so machine's off, I, I back fed it. I also, before I did this, just to get a clean reading, is before I did anything, I cleaned up the, with the machine off, I unplugged the sensor and, and it wiggles right out of there. You can take it out. And I cleaned it with some electrical cleaner. And that's only because I want to rule out any bad connection or bad ground perhaps from some corrosion. So you want to always start with a uh, good connection. So to do that, you can you can clean out the, the connection with some electrical cleaner. You spray in there, plug it all back together, back feed the wire, machine's off still. And now you're ready to turn the machine not on, but in the in the key on position, so you can you can get the voltage going through the uh, through the actual switch, so you can see what the voltage is. Okay, so I'm going to turn on the machine. 
Okay, I got the key in the on position. Again, machine's not, not running, I didn't start it, but it's in the on position. And right away, you got voltage. You got voltage and it's 4.4 volts. Um, I had actually got the voltage reading earlier and I was kind of messing around with the clutch pedal to see what the, what the range was. So when I first did this about a half an hour ago, um, it was like 3.8, 3.9, almost four volts. And the recommended range to be within tolerance is 4.2 to 4.8 when the clutch is fully released and about 0.9 or one volt when it's fully um, pressed in, right? So, so if, you, if you notice, that's not really showing that it's out of range then, right? So if you look at this, you say, okay, 4.2 to 4.8, well, I'm at 4.4, uh, it's not really out of range. However, when you first do this, and let's say it's cold outside, or you're you're just doing this for the first time in a day or two, that switch will behave differently if it's bad. So <clears throat> when I first when I first turned this on, this switch was at 3.8, 3.9, and which which doesn't really say the switch is bad. It just means it's out of tolerance and needs to be um, calibrated. But when I took the clutch and I moved it from left to right, not not in or out, but just left or right, and kind of wiggled the uh, the arm on the switch, you know, not moving where it was the position of it, it actually would drop down to three volts, two volts, and it was all over the place, right? And I didn't depress anything. So that was that was what you'll see when the switch starts to go bad. It's either the contacts inside the the variable switch are corroded and not working in a certain position, and you're getting low voltage when you should be getting um, a very uh, steady, even, you know, consistent voltage, especially if you're not touching the pedal by pushing it in or out. So I'm gonna go ahead and move it left or right and see if I can get it to do that weird voltage thing again. You see right there, if, I, if I, I'm not pushing, oh, see there, two volts. I'm not pushing down on the clutch at all. I'm not, and, it, and what's happening is, um, getting a fluctuation of voltage just by moving the shaft a little bit from left to right on the variable uh, switch. So you can see that there's obviously a spot on the, on the positioning of that switch arm that if you were just to wiggle the shaft, not in or out, but just side to side, it's not a steady, consistent voltage. So that is enough to tell the machine to stop, right? Because it's thinking you're pressing in the clutch. And then once that position then uh, you know, it hasn't changed, but then it's, it's a little bit of a fluctuation higher in voltage. It's telling the machine to start. And even though you haven't touched the clutch pedal, this is all kind of happening without you knowing it because you're getting a voltage fluctuation when you, when you push on the, on the switch. Let me see if I can get it to happen again. Yep, the four point. Yeah, so you can see there is definitely fluctuation in that. And if you... Yeah, see that? You're down a little bit there. So so it's right where it's out of range, and it was much worse when I first started this um, half an hour ago when it was completely cold and sitting for, you know, a day or two, and that's where, that's where I would notice it, to be honest with you, when this problem would happen. It would be kind of early on when you first started in the day, if it sat for a day, um, and then it would slowly kind of get better, you know, over, over the 10 or 15 minutes when it first started. So that, that's a real way to tell, you know, if it's when it's cold, when you first start it uh, for 10 or 15 minutes, if it acts kind of erratic and stops and starts by itself, it's probably time to replace this variable switch. And that's the clutch uh, potentiometer, they call that on the parts uh, list. And I, I want to say it's relatively inexpensive to, ch to change this. So it's not like you're, it's not like you're gonna be spending a fortune and you're gonna do it yourself, obviously, if you can, because there's just two bolts and a clip in the back of the shaft that you pull off to, to do that. What you're gonna to have to do, of course, is, is reset or recalibrate the voltage. And I'm gonna do that now just to show you how you do that. So you, if you wanna do this, if you're out of range a little bit, you can definitely do this as well and it should help. But again, this, this switch here is, is going on this machine. So if you see any fluctuation at all when it shouldn't be uh, fluctuating, meaning you're not pushing it on the clutch and you're taking a voltage reading, then it's, it's the switch is starting to go. So just change it. But let's say it's not and you're like, you know, four volts or 3.9 or 4.1 volts, then you can adjust it and recalibrate this. Um, you know, you can, you can set it to 4.2 to 4.8 on the high side. And then when you press it in, 
you want to be in the 0.9. I got it all the way in now here. And, and I'm at like 0.85. So that's, that's not out of range because it's 0.9 plus or minus 0.1. So you can go from 0.8 to, to 1 volt and you're still within tolerance. And you can see as I slowly let the clutch out, the voltage is going to increase. And, and all this system is doing is telling the, the controller to say, hey, you know, I've got the clutch in. I'm at 0.9 volts. You know, don't don't apply power to the solenoids on the on the clutch. So there's a forward clutch and a backwards clutch on the e-power reverser, and all that controller is doing is saying, "Hey, it's at 0.9 volts on the clutch. Cut power to the to the solenoids on the transmission. And the transmission just stops, right? So you come to a stop, and then it's going to say, as you're halfway, apply half power, right, to the solenoid. You're going to start to feel it start to take off and catch like you normally would, and all the way out." Uh, it's going to say go ahead and take off. You see how low that is? That's out of range, but, but that's out of range because I believe the switch is just bad and faulty. But um, it's 3.5, the clutch is all the way out, it's 3.58. And this is when, exactly when you start, to, it'll start to go, it's enough to, to move the machine, but within five or 10 feet, it'll come to a, a stop and you haven't touched the clutch at all. It'll come to a stop and then it will go by itself, start going by itself all over again. So it'll stop, start, stop, start, and you won't even touch the clutch because the voltage is just way, way too low. You're at 3.6, and the calibration's gotta be at least 4.2 minimal to 4.8. So, so that's right there, um, you know, a bad, a bad uh, potentiometer switch, and that's, that's what it will look like under, under voltage when it's going in a bad cycle. So now if I pull up on this, you'll see this. I'll pull up on it, and look at it, it just popped back to 4.5 volts. This is when uh, people report, well, I, pushed, I pulled up on the clutch pedal with my foot and it went again and it worked fine. Well, that's because the potentiometer is now in, within range at basically full voltage to the, to the solenoids on the transmission. And it's telling the solenoids to open up fully and forward. And, and that's why you're able to go and you don't even notice it. And then next time you put the clutch in, it could happen all over again. See, now it's fine that time. Let's see if it happens again. It's good. So yeah, so you can see it's not gonna be consistent and uh, that's exactly what people report, right? They'll say it goes, it stops, it goes. That's usually a problematic um, thing that happens when the voltage is just too low and it will stop and start by itself. Or if you're going uphill, it won't have enough traction in the, in the clutch mechanism because the solenoids aren't open enough. So you're thinking the clutch is bad. It's not the clutch uh, that's bad. It's really just a solenoid not opening all the way. So that, that's a real easy way to kind of understand how this um, system works on the E-Series with the, with the clutch. Uh, it's really that simple, and I hope this is helpful to you. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out on my channel. Okay, I wanted to also show the adjustment of the potentiometer switch. Um, so again, I got this back fed with a wire, and I'm on a center wire, and I've got I intentionally put this out of range. I've already loosened up the two bolts, but I have a 4.07 voltage and I should have 4.2 to 4.8 with the clutch fully out. So the way you loosen these up is you put a, a wrench in the back, uh, 5 sixteenths, and then use a socket you know, in the front and you can loosen up these two. There's a bolt with a, a nut in the back. There's two of those. You loosen those and then you're literally gonna take this whole thing. Don't loosen it up so it's, it's so loose where it's gonna fall off in your hands kind of thing, you leave the nut in place and just turn it maybe a couple turns. Uh, you're gonna turn it, turn it towards you, it'll increase the voltage. And I can show you that as I, as I turn it with the voltage going up here, so uh, 4.7. So I, I turned it clockwise, you know, maybe an eighth of an inch, and I, and I got pretty much 0.8 volts out of it. So it's fairly easy to do this. It's not, so, it's not super sensitive where if you just touch it, it's, it's all over the place. It takes a lot to, to change the voltage. So if I go, if I go counterclockwise, I'll show you how much I turn it. About that much. Turned it quite a bit and I'm only losing not even a volt, right? So super easy to, to recalibrate these things. And if the switch isn't bad, um, this one again, it has a bad switch, but let's say it wasn't, it was just out of range like it is now. Um, you wanna just uh, adjust it clockwise and I'm gonna go and show you again how much it took. And that was pr pretty much the max. You wanna be, it's 4.8, I think it's plus or minus 0.1, so maybe 4.9 you can go to even, but you don't wanna go all the way up because this is gonna be, um, 
it should be right in the middle, I'll be honest with you, just because if you go too high with it and let's say it's hot outside, temperature kind of has a funny way of, of playing around with voltage in some cases, especially when there's uh, you know a variable resistor in there or something or a sensor it's going to be temperature sensitive a little bit I would say so if you're if you're going to adjust this right at the max it's probably not a good idea you probably want to be right around 4.5 uh, volts so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back down again on that a little bit get that where I want it yeah right about there 4.5 volts would be fair right you don't want to be at the min 4.2 or at the max 4.8 you want to be right in the center of that range in my opinion that's what i would recommend right you can do what you want here use your own judgment um but that that should be as easy as it would be to adjust this so there's there's two adjustments there's the adjustment on the, on the clutch all the way out the high adjustment and the low adjustment so now we have to test the low adjustment and make sure you know we're within range so you can see that needs to be 0.9 and it has plus or minus 0.1, so it could be one volt. I'm a little high, to be honest with you, I'm a little high on that, so I'm gonna have to back this down again from 4.57 to maybe 4.4, somewhere in there. So I'm gonna twist it just a little more, just a hair. And that's gonna bring me, I'm at 4.3 on the high, and I'm at 0.95. Um, I'm gonna bring that up, honestly, because I want to make sure I get plenty of voltage, especially because this is a bad um, switch right now, and I need to move the machine out of the garage before the new one's in. I'm gonna increase that just a hair, so I'm at 4.48 on the high, and about one on the low, right? 0.97 is around one, and uh, about four, uh, four point, I don't know, five. I pulled up on the clutch a little bit there, so 4.5, and I'm gonna go down all the way. I'm one volt that in my mind is intolerance now you see you see the problem there again this is a bad switch so it's gonna do this to me but that clutch is all the way out and it should be at 4.5 volts and it's at 3.9 not even four volts way too low watch I'll pull up on the clutch and show you what happens you see the the reading go to 4.5 now it's it's in full full forward or full reverse on the solenoid working just fine but uh, that is what happens you push down all the way and you come up and now it's fine again. So, so that's a good, a good example of a bad, you know, a bad switch, um, but also a good example of how to adjust it. If it was a good switch, you could recalibrate that and you'll be, you'll be um, back and it won't do the, the stopping and starting all by itself any longer, okay? Again, I hope this is helpful. Uh, this is a really easy system to work on, the E, the e series, and a lot of people don't like to work on them because they just don't understand how simple they are, but, if you use these simple, you know, steps to backfeed the, the backfeed voltage, uh, it's real easy to troubleshoot where the problem is once you, once you understand that. And these sensors are on both the hydro and the power reverser, both the E-series, they have the same concept. The hydro has them on the, on the forward and reverse pedals, and the, the power reverser has them on the clutch, and there's a few other spots on the machine that these sensors exist, and that's, that's really how they work. So hopefully, uh, this makes you a little more comfortable when you, when you want to work on one of these and you're not afraid to. And again, if you have questions, uh, please reach out.